Hey there, you're listening to the Pursue Your Spark podcast. I'm your host, Heike Yates. We're here to help you live a healthy, fit, and confident lifestyle with tips, strategies, and interviews. Listen to the most inspiring women and how they dared to live the life they dreamed of and handle roadblocks in their path. Well, hey there, Heike Yates here, and welcome to another episode of the Pursue Your Spark podcast. Today is Quick Tip Day. But before I dive in, grab your earbuds and settle in because this quick tip is a little bit longer than my normal quick tips. So we're talking about what is intuitive eating and is it something you should try? There was an article in the New York Times Sunday Opinion section titled, Smash the Wellness Industry. Why are so many smart women falling for its harmful pseudoscientific claims? It's true, it can be very difficult in today's society of diets and quick fixes to break the cycle and focus instead of health and healthy habits. We are bombarded with outside messages ranging from peer pressure and totally from the media showing us what we should look like, what we should dress, what we should eat or shouldn't eat more often than not, or what diets we should follow that are current with the trend. So I thought it would be awesome that we're talking about something different and it's called intuitive eating, if you have not heard about it. So we're taking, we're taking a closer look into what is intuitive eating, what are the 10 principles of intuitive eating, Is intuitive eating ideal for weight loss? And what is a set point? So intuitive eating is not a food or a diet plan, but a self-discovery of eating mindfully and without guilt. You don't count calories, macros, or points, and there are no food restrictions, but instead, you are encouraged to rely on your internal hunger cues. We all know that diets or food restrictions backfire. And most of us gain the weight back over time as we go back to our normal habits. But we still keep hoping that those diets help us establish a healthy and sustainable weight. I talked about this over and over, and I keep talking about it, that diets and quick fixes don't work. This method embraces the mind-body connection and guides you back to our natural instinct as the authors describe. But is it that easy to break free of years of overeating, eating the wrong things for the wrong reasons? The authors believe so. The term intuitive eating was coined by Evelyn Tribol and Elise Resch in the 1990s. Since then, they've written several books and participated in numerous research studies on their method. Their most recent publication, The Intuitive Eating Workbook, was published last year. The 10 core principles are guidelines to help establish a healthy relationship with food, mind, and body. The authors base their principle on existing research and experience with their clients. Scientists have validated their work through studies and that intuitive eating is not only a way to live, but it may effectively treat binge eating. So let's dive into the 10 principles of intuitive eating. Number one is reject the diet mentality. Stop dieting and reject the quick fixes that promise lasting results. Get rid of diet books and plans that promise fast weight loss or dictate to eat only certain foods and not others. Sounds familiar, doesn't it? Two, honor your hunger. Instead of counting calories or even watching portions, pay attention to your body's hunger cues. Once you learn to read the signs and the signals your body is sending you, it's much easier to repair an unhealthy relationship with food. Number three, make peace with food. This principle of intuitive eating gives yourself unconditional permission to eat. 
Once you no longer feel that certain food groups are forbidden, they become so less tempting. Many of us have been told in the past that bagels are bad and they're high in carbs. Once you make peace with food, you might not even want the bagel after all. Number four, challenge the food police. Chase away those thoughts and people that tell you there's good food or bad food and you shouldn't eat this food and instead eat that food. They only make you feel guilty if you don't follow those exact rules. Number five, respect your fullness. This is, goes hand in hand with principle number two. Stop in the middle of the meal and assess your hunger cues instead of eating without stopping until you're completely stuffed without paying attention to it or because you're bored or stressed, resulting in definitely overeating. Number six, discover the satisfaction factor. This is about bringing awareness back to your meals and how the food tastes, smells, and the texture of it without the distraction of a TV or uh, watching your stuff, something on your, on your iPhone. So really pay attention when you eat and be in the moment. Number seven, honor your feelings without using food. When we overeat, it could just be that we're super stressed and don't, really don't know how else to reduce stress other than by eating. But being more mindful of all aspects in life can help you stop turning those situations away from food and healthier solutions to deal with those feelings that trigger overeating. Number eight, respect your body. Accept your body no matter what size. And it's not about looking like a model you saw on Instagram in her tight jeans. Intuitive eating is not a weight loss plan, but may help you with changing an unhealthy history of dieting. Number nine, exercise. Feel the difference. It is crucial to include activities that are sustainable and that you enjoy while practicing intuitive eating. Exercise has so many benefits, and it's not always just about what burns the most calories. Number 10, honor your health with gentle nutrition. The authors suggest you do eat what you want, but that doesn't mean to neglect healthy and nutritious meals. They encourage, encourage healthy eating by adding more fruits and vegetables rather than full fat ice cream. But don't beat yourself up if your choices are less than perfect. Now, what do you think of those 10 rules from the intuitive eating book? Do those 10 steps sound familiar? I've been coaching for over 30 years and these 10 steps really, or principles, really speak from my heart. And I've been coaching this in all of my programs, including the, my latest program, the four week lean out program. We're talking about honoring the hunger. We're making poos a piece with food. We are respecting fullness and satisfaction and we're honoring our body and respect the way we feel about ourselves and we incorporate exercise. It is just amazing how these 10 tips align with what I teach and what I strongly believe. Now, let's talk about number three. Is intuitive eating ideal for weight loss. Intuitive eating is for any woman of any size. When you start the intuitive eating journey, three things can happen to your body. You might gain weight, you might lose weight, or your weight will stay the same. Intuitive eating over time supports your body in finding your natural set point. So what is a set point? A set point is the weight your body naturally maintains and returns to after a period of restrictive eating or overeating. Your weight set point is influenced by your genetics, biological tendencies, can be, but can be changed by activities and behavior. 
Many people have experienced the frustration of watching the numbers on the scale go up and down and then they go back up and every two days you weigh yourself and it fluctuated again. But the natural tendency of your body is to defend a weight that feels biologically comfortable, which makes weight change tough for many of us. So where do we go from here? It is important to remember that with intuitive eating, weight loss is not the goal. Health is the goal. When health is the goal, we focus on behaviors and habits rather than numbers. And as I said before, it can be really difficult with quick fixes and diets and cleanses to focus on health and habit. And I want you to turn yourself away from these messages and think about today's podcast. Think about that intuitive eating can be a great start, but I believe that a balanced approach infusing education about healthy food, portion sizes, and meal timing are super necessary to help you be successful in the long run. So I agree with all of those points, but guidance and somebody to help you with these things is crucial in my opinion. So now I want to know about you. What do you think about intuitive eating? Have you tried it before? And what was your experience? So I am so excited that you were here with me today at Quick Tip Thursday at the Pursue Your Spark podcast. And I can't wait to see you next week for another interview with another one of our amazing women. Until then, have an awesome day and I'll see you soon.